All right, we got a QR code. You can scan this. Uh, it's always good to maybe go back and uh, look at what we've been talking about um, throughout the week, especially this one, right? Like, I think this would be a good one just to be able to go back and look at as we talk about the presence um, of God. Um, let's, let's be reminded, okay, what we're focused on in this entire series is this. What does it look like to live, okay, with our eyes up? What does it look like to live with our eyes up, focused on seeing God? Focused on experiencing him, focused on, man, God watching, we're watching you, we're watching for you. Henry Blackaby was a guy who wrote a, a Bible study. And, and if you've been in church for a while and you've maybe even came out of a, the Southern Baptist world, um, you might have had a Bible study you did called Experiencing God. Um, and it was, a, it was a pretty powerful book or a pretty powerful experience. Um, and, and I remember one of the things that he talked about is, is it's, it's this principle of God. It's watching where God is and then joining him there. God, my eyes are up and I'm looking for you. And wherever I see you, I'm going to join you there. I'm going to watch and I'm going to be with you. And so that's what we're asking. That's what, that we're, that's what we're looking at in this time of like going, how, how intentional are we about that? And if you're anything like me, like you have moments in your day where you're super intentional. And then you find that you've gone like hours and it's like, I didn't even thought about the things of God. And God loves us. Don't get me wrong. He's like, I mean, I'm someone you should keep on your mind all the time, but he, he understands. I mean, we get caught up in a lot of other things, but he doesn't want us to stay at that place. He wants us to continue to be at this place where we're going, God, what are you doing? God, we, how are you working? How are you working? How are you working? Two of the verses, and I'm going to add one that we've been kind of thinking through. One's Isaiah 40, 31. Again, you're going you're gonna to have this memorized, um, but they who... Wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. But the key to that is what? It's waiting for him. And it's not just kind of this, this kind of laid back waiting. It's this idea of like anxiously waiting. Like you know something is about to happen and you're ready for it. You're ready for that. They who wait for the Lord, he says, they shall renew their strength. But here's the deal. We don't get to understand that renewal without waiting for him. We can't understand the rest of this. It's all contingent upon our willingness to wait for him. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. All who wait. Micah 7, 7. I love it. He says this, but as for me, I will watch expectantly for the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. And then Psalm 27, 14 is, is a new one that I want to throw at you. It says this, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. So here's what it is. Wait be courageous in that, be strong in that, be a person that is strong and dedicated and devoted to this waiting. Let your heart take courage in that. And then he ends it with, wait for him. One of the most profound memories um, that I have uh, of waiting with expectancy, gentlemen, you'll, you'll understand this. Um, I, I hope you do. If you don't, we need to talk about your marriage. Um, I remembered like the day that I got married and Kristen and I decided to like see each other before. Okay. We did kind of like that, that first look where it was just like nobody else was there and it was just kind of her and I, and I remember she said, Hey, just go in the chapel and just have your back turned to the door and I'm going to walk in. And when I touch you on the shoulder, you can turn around. And I remember standing there back facing away from where she's going to be walking in and just in my mind, I was going, Oh my gosh, you get a little giddy about it. Get a little, you're pretty excited and, and then touched you on your shoulder and I turned around and it was just like, oh my gosh. But even having seen her prior to our wedding, I remember standing on the altar 
And, and, and I'll tell you, I've married a lot of people and I've seen a lot of dudes in this room like, and, and I watch them when that door opens, I just kind of turn and I watch the guy because man, watching the anxiousness come to this place of going, yes. Like I remember that, right? Like I'm standing at the front of this altar and I'm just kind of waiting there, you know, kind of shuffling a little bit and just, and I'm watching those doors and all of a sudden the music changes and I'm like, this is it. And the door comes wide open. And in that moment, I'm thinking, man, all of this waiting. And now I get to stand right here with my best friend. I get to stand right here and be right now and say, I love you. And I do in front of all these people, but with her. And I get to be with her for as long as I'm here, as long as she's here. And there's just something about that excitement and anticipation. But you know what it is? You're not excited about something. You're not excited about this idea of marriage. You're excited about the someone. And you're excited about being with that someone. My question for you is, are you more excited about this something of religion or this idea of religion, or are you more excited about the someone that we get to be with? The someone that we're in a relationship with, the someone that we get to be together like in his presence and he is with us and we are with him. Like, do we get a little antsy about that? Does this right here become for you that standing on the altar where you're waiting for those doors to open, where you walk in here and just go, I'm ready for the doors to open. What are you going to do? I can't wait to see you. This is going to be so cool. Do we have that mindset when we walk in here? This is going to be cool. What God is going to do is going to be awesome. I wonder how often we're disappointed when we walk out of church because we're just like, man, I didn't see God. But is it that we didn't see God or that we weren't looking for him? Because I promise you, he's here. The question is, is did we miss it? So what does it look like to live with this expectancy for God's presence? Well, let's talk about, right? Like we're kind of breaking it down into threes, right? The first part is just the duh. Like this is the part, you and I are not gonna disagree on this. If we do, then we can, we can we're probably talking semantics, but we're not gonna disagree on some of these things because there's truth and reality that we have to hold fast to. Number one is this right here in Genesis, God made his creation and it said that he walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. I mean, talking about a people that understood presence they got it they got what it meant to walk with him to talk with him to experience this 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 time so we we know that God works in in that way Moses and the children of Israel as they're walking through the wilderness and as they're going into this promised land I, I remember like like thinking how fascinating this was that God's presence became to them a what it was a fire by night and a cloud by day now we just kind of look at that and just go, so, so what did he just send that? And like, they're just kind of following this fire. No, 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 it was him. He was the fire by day or by night in the cloud by day. Like they're following him. Not this idea of him, not this imagery piece of him. It was him. Because God's just big enough he can do that, right? Like he can work with all these people over here all the while being fire over here for these people to go, oh, this is who we're following, God. So we reckon, we know that, right? God told Moses, like, like I'm gonna go with you. You remember what Moses said? We talked about this in one of our other series. Moses says, listen, I'm not going if you're not going. If you're not going, I'm out. And God goes, I'm going. I'm gonna be with you. So we see that God is this God that's like, I want you to see me. I want you to know me. That's why he tells us in, in Psalm 34, 8, be still and know, or taste and see. Sorry, taste and see that I'm good. He says that. He says, I'm here, so taste that I'm good. See that I'm good. 
That is a God that reveals himself so that we can see him, his presence. He wants us to grasp that. Here's just some verses. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go through them and I just need you to, to listen, right? They'll be up here. Zephaniah three seventeen. the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. God is in your midst. Matthew 18, 20, we've already said this one. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Now specifically in context, he's talking about in disciplining and, and, and walking in discipline, even in kind of church settings. So where there's two or three of you that are doing this in my name, he goes, I need you not to fret. I'm gonna be there with you and I'm gonna show you what this is supposed to look like. But here's the deal, that carries over into, very, in, in, into all other aspects. He doesn't just show up when we're disciplined. We're here. We're worshiping. We're two more gathered, right? Like he's with us. We see this, right? Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He does not get any closer than that. Y'all, he's in your front yard. He's at your front door. He says, I'm standing here. I'm knocking. And what's the invitation, right? Open the door. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. He's gonna sit down at the table with you. Presence. That's what he wants to do. How many, how often do we treat God kind of like the salesman? Knocking on that door and we're turning the lights off. You ain't coming in. He stands and he knocks. He says, open the door. Psalm 27, 4, we're getting into some, some words of, of writers and Psalms talking about the presence of God. He said, one thing that I've asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Listen, you can't do that. How do you gaze upon the beauty of the Lord without seeing that? Without it being there and going, God, you're beautiful. Lord, you're radiant. I don't get it. God, your presence is consuming. Like we understand those things. Psalm 73, 28, but for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge that I may tell uh, of all your works. But as for me, it is good. For you, when you're in the presence of God, do you look at that and go, this is so good. To the point where you find yourself going, man, I'm feeling distant right now in, in the presence of God, and this is not good. Hey, do you find yourself doing that? And, and not at that point where it's too late, where you're just like going, man, I'm too far gone. But right, like, like you find yourself slipping out of that, and you're going, man, this isn't good. Because it's good for me to be near him. So if I'm disconnected from him, do you look at yourself and go, this is not good. This is not good. I don't like this. To the point that you go, okay, so now let's fix that, right? Psalm 1611 is talking about the presence and, and, and just what we get in that. He says, you make known to me the path of life, right? Cloud by day, fire by night. That was the point. He was like, follow me. I'm gonna be in your midst. Follow what I'm doing. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. So you have to ask the question. So if you're not in his presence, what are you filled with? Not joy. Could it be that a lot of our anxiousness that we live is the result of not being in his presence? Because he tells us in, in Philippians 4, what does he say? Listen, like God's here, don't be anxious. So is our anxiousness this driven reality of us going, man, I'm, I'm, I don't feel connected. I don't feel like I'm, I'm where I need to be in, in presence with him. Because he tells us, in your presence there's fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Deuteronomy 31.6. 
Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He, what, will not leave you or... So what does that say about his presence? He's not going anywhere. He's here to stay. And he wants us to understand that so that we long for him. That's so important that again in Revelation 13, 5, he says it again. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So here's my question. Just, just, this is mono e mono, okay? Just me and you. Do you believe that stuff? Do you believe everything we just talked about? I'll never leave you nor forsake you, and my presence is fullness of joy, the right hand's pleasures forevermore. Do we believe that stuff? Do we stand like a groom at the altar waiting his bride and stand with him as we stand waiting and looking and anticipating Jesus' presence? God, it's just so good. I can't wait to wake up in the morning and get started just with you and your presence. Or are our heads looking up for God? Do we have a desire to be in the presence of God? Because here's, here's what I believe. Listen. We can know that God's nearness is good and operate as though we are living in his presence all the while not actually experiencing it. My guess is, is that we could have a conversation sometime during the week and I could ask, hey, are you in the presence of God this week? And many of us will be like, yeah! Yeah! Yeah, because that's what Christians are supposed to say. Yeah, no, I'm in the presence of God. But if we have like an actuality meter, like are we actually experiencing that? Do we experience the idea of being in God's presence or do we experience his presence? So where do we stand in that? And, and I want to recall the passage that we talked about in the very beginning in 2 Timothy 3, 5. And I'm kind of weaving this into so much of what we're talking about. But he's talking about having the appearance of godliness to, but denying its power. And, and it's told to avoid such people. Here's the reality. It's entirely possible to look like the real deal and not operate from the realness of God's power and his presence. It's possible to, to, to understand that all here. That's why there's a lot of people in marriages that struggle sometimes because you ask, you like, hey, are you guys married? And they're like, yeah, we're married. We sleep in the same bed. But if you really got to the heart of the matter and just go, no, 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 no. Are you guys, like, together? Is there this relationship where you're in each other's presence? And that's where sometimes marriages get a little bit tough to talk about because it's like going, nope. We're just kind of two people doing two things and we just kind of happen to be at the same house. And I wonder if sometimes that's kind of a description of how we see our walk with the Lord. It's just like, oh yeah, no, 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 we're tight, we're buddies, right? Like me and God, we're... But when you really start getting down to the nitty-gritty of it, like, are we in the presence? I think we can be well-intentioned followers of God that live knowing that his nearness is good but not actually living in intentional or practical awareness of his presence. Again, not one of you are going to deny. I'm not going to deny. We're two or three are gathered. God's there. But how often do we leave and just go, man, I'm, is God even there? So what did we miss? What did, what did, what did we miss? So here's the question that we have to ask at this point in time. How is this possible? How is it possible to just be well-intentioned and not actually be in God's presence? How do we get to that point? I've, I've got some things that i kind of just been kind of going, man, God, why do we struggle with this? And really some of it is like looking inwardly and going, God, why do I struggle with this whole presence thing sometimes? So I came up with, a, 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 yeah, five. I came up with five of them. I added one last second. Number one, you ready for this? 
Why do we struggle with this? Number one, because we don't position ourselves to see or experience his presence. We don't position ourselves to do that. I, I know I use fishing as an analogy a lot, and, and we're just going to continue walking that out. If I want to catch a big fish, if I want to catch a fish, where do I have to be? In the water. I can't have the anticipation of catching a big fish if my fly is not floating down the water across a fish for him to bite it. I can't anticipate, I can't anticipate the excitement, I can't anticipate the rush. Not like when that fly is there and I'm watching it and I'm like going, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. Okay, that wasn't it. All right, this is it. This is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. Nope, that wasn't it either. All right, this is it, right? And I could do it. People, like my wife's like, you didn't catch anything? I'm like, oh, no, I didn't catch anything. She's like, was it fun? I'm like, oh, it was great. <laughs> like the excitement that I had on every cast was so amazing. Like for me, like just literally just, I think I could probably just stand in the water with my glasses on and just kind of watch and just be like, yeah, this is good. But if I never position myself there, I'm not going to catch a fish. I can watch other people catch a fish. Oh, I just took a spin on the sermon. How many of us are more interested in watching what other people experience with God, but we never position ourselves to do that? Man, God, look what he's doing over there. I want God to do it here. I love that he's doing it there. I want it here. And to do that, where do I got to be? In the water. I got to be there. Listen, if we're not putting ourselves in a place and space to experience his presence, then we won't have an expectancy for him to, to show up and work. If we don't do that. So I know that if I put myself in a place to see God, then there's a real good chance that I'm going to see him. I know that if I put myself in a place where I can hear from God, that there's a real good chance that I'm going to hear from God. But if I don't do this intentionally, I won't be thinking then or in that day, hey, what? God's here. God's here. Jeremiah 29, 12 and 13, what does it say? Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I'm gonna hear you. You will seek me and find me when you do it, when you seek me with all your heart. So there is something about this position of seeking that we have to put ourselves in if we want to experience his presence. Now here's the deal. This is extra. He'll show you himself without you seeking. But typically when I saw that in the Bible, it was because they were so hard-headed and so off the path and so out of, that God was like, I gotta get your attention. I didn't think about Moses in the burning bush. What was he out doing? He was out shepherding. He was not having a quiet time, he was out shepherding. And God says, burning bush. He got his attention all right. Balaam, he's someone who heard God pretty well. He got real stubborn and hard-hearted. What happened? Donkey bucked him off, and then he opened his mouth and started talking. Balaam wasn't having a conversation back with his donkey. It wasn't like, bro, this is cool. I got a talking donkey. No, homeboy was like, oops. But if we're not positioning ourselves there, it's gonna be hard for us to experience. Jeremiah 33, three, call to me and I will answer you and I'm gonna tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Number two, and I think this one hits hard in a lot of people's lives, you ready for this one? We just don't feel worthy to be in his presence. I think there's a lot of us that struggle in his presence because we're just thinking, man, there is not a single chance in the world that God wants me with him. If I was God, I wouldn't want me with him. 
And so in our minds, we can't get to this place that God in Christ Jesus and through his blood and through his redemption and what he's done in our lives can actually bring us to a place where there is no condemnation on us, that we can approach the throne of grace with confidence, that we can be in God's presence. Even as people who are still a little bit on the jacked up side of things. But we struggle with that because we're thinking, man, there's not a chance that God's okay with me. I lived that life for a long time. So I get it. When we hear that, come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Like we exclude ourselves from that statement. Like come to me is for everybody else but me. I'm not good enough to be there. Okay. Number three we live with this idea and, and go with this, okay? Because I think this is, this is one that kind of speaks to a lot on the religious level, right? We live with this idea that God's presence is contingent upon our ability, attitude, or our affections. So we have this idea and mindset of like, man, in order for me to experience the presence of God, I've got to be in the right place at the right time, right? And I've got to set this mood and I've got to make sure that the candles are lit and I've got to make sure that the music is playing and I've got to make sure that I'm reading the right thing and I'm doing the right thing. And man, if all of this is working out at the right way, the kids aren't in here and they're not bothering me at any point in time, then whoa, I can be in the presence of God. Look at all this stuff that I did so that I can be in the presence of God. And God's going, man, you missed it. Mary got it. Martha struggled. Martha was like, let me do all this stuff. And Mary was just like, I'm just going to be here. I'm just going to be at your feet. Or how about this one, right? Like it's contingent upon like our emotions for the day. We wake up and we're a little bit on the depressed side of things. And it's just like, I don't even have a desire. I didn't want this. So we wake up and if we're feeling good, then God's presence is great. But if we wake up and we're feeling bad, then So it's a contingent upon what we can or can't do. You can't stop the presence of God. If God wants to show up, he gonna show up. And it might be that you're struggling and there's days that I do where I struggle to even utter the, God, I love you. God, I need you. It's hard to even do that because I'm just not in a good place. And God loves it when we're not in a good place. That's why he says, come to me all who are not in a good place. And I'll give you rest. So it's okay that you're not okay. Come to the one that can make you okay. It's just not about you though. Know what you can do. Number four, uh, we don't really believe God can or will show up. And this might be a faith issue. It might be a, a, a faith is lacking type issue where you're just kind of at this place where you're just like going, man, you know what? I'm, I'm just not sure. I just, I'm, I, I've been waiting for God to show up in this, in this place for a long time and he just hasn't yet. And so I guess he's just not. And maybe our disappointment is kind of leading us out into this place of just not really believing that God can or will. Or it might even be that God just doesn't care enough about you to actually show up in your life. But he seems to show up in your neighbor's life and you're just like, God, I don't get it. But I think we have a hard time with the presence of God and and really seeking after the presence of God because we're not really sure that he will. And number five, I think this is a pretty dangerous one as well. Um, we love the instant gratification. We like now, don't we? Like, God, you're pretty smart. Like, I don't even need to ask you. Just do it. Like, that's the kind of now that we like. I don't even have to ask God to show up, and I'm just like, boom, he's there, right? Like, we like that instant gratification stuff. And if it's not now, and, and we pray that, God, I need you to show up. God, I need you now. And then we live in this contingency plan of like, but God, if you don't, I have something that I can go to. I have something else that'll meet my need. I'm just giving you first chance. But if you're not there, hey, don't worry. I got something 
that's over here that's probably in my mind just as good. God, show up in my marriage. Oh, you're not? Okay, sweet. Let me go find out from somebody else what I should do. We like the now, and sometimes we don't wait for God. We don't watch for God. I think we could add one of those too because we think that what we have in mind is probably a pretty good idea. I don't need God's idea. I got a pretty good plan. I know what I should do, right? So we don't wait. We don't watch. We don't, we're not looking for that cloud by day and that fire by night, God in our presence saying, go here, do this, walk with me, let's move. So those are the five things that I think, and there's probably more if we all sit down and brainstorm, it's probably just in your personal life, you could probably go, well, this is why I struggle with it, right? These are just some that I looked at and I'm just like, well, man, I think those are some pretty strong ones, right? But the real question that we have to ask ourselves is, so how do we put ourselves in this place? How do we come to this place where we're living with intentionality, eyes up? How do we put ourselves eyes up so that we can see what God is doing? We can see his presence. How do we operate in that? And I came up with three characteristics that I think kind of define somebody who goes like, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm watching for God. I'm waiting for him. Like I'm seeking him. Number one, this is going to sound familiar based on the one that we started with a minute ago is this right here. They are positioned to see God. They put themselves in a position of anticipation, a position where they're gonna go, yeah, right here, right here. If our eyes are not up looking, how are we gonna see? If we're not positioned in that place where we know that God moves, how are we gonna see? If our ears are not pinned back, perked up, I mean, how are you gonna hear? You're not on your feet, ready to move. I'll be able to join God where he's at. For me, I know. I know. Because I've tested it on both sides. That when I start my day in God's word, with the awareness of God, I just want to meet with you. Not, I need to check this off my list so I can get through my Bible reading plan. But God, I want to meet with you. That when I do that, it changes my day. And I can tell you that because I've experienced the other side of that, where I've just kind of jetted through the Bible real quick so that I can mark it off on my YouVersion app. Or I just kind of read it going, yeah, this is good, but I don't really meditate on God actually speaking to my heart. And there's no engagement in this presence of God peace at this point in time. I know that because when I walk away from that, I typically, I typically struggle pretty hard. So I've seen it. So if I position myself to be in a place of worship with him where I'm receiving and I'm, and he's ministering and I'm ministering and we're both in this place where I'm just like, God, I want to hear from you. God, here's my heart. God, would you fill me up? God, I'm just, that's why scripture tells us, right? What does it say? Psalm 27, 14, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for him. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Be strong. When I'm coaching, we have this thing that's called an athletic stance, right? Because players will get up there and they kind of have this like, you know, they're in the outfield and they're just kind of like, you know, you got linebackers that are just kind of standing there just waiting. If they do that, they're getting plowed, right? But we have this athletic stance where it's like feet apart, knees bent, head up, and our hands, we're just ready. I'm positioned here. I'm ready. If it comes, I can move. Are you positioned? Is your heart ready? Is your mind ready? Is it positioned, ready to experience in him? Like in verse 37, seven, he says this, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. That's a position. I'm still, I'm ready. And wait patiently for you. Fret not yourselves over the one who prospers in the way, over the man who carries out evil deeds. I need you to hear this, you ready? God's position doesn't waver. 
But our position is contingent upon our willingness to draw near and experience his presence. God's not going anywhere. If anybody's running and going somewhere, it's you. It's me. So our willingness to be ready to stand firm and we're, we're ready to go, God, let's go. Those will be people who experience his presence. They're positioned, they're poised, they're ready to go. So position yourself to watch with your eyes up. I love Jesus in the garden. Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, he's with his disciples. And they're going out to pray, right? Before he's, before he's like handed over, they go out to pray. And I, I, I thought about this the other day and I was like, man, God, this is so good, right? Like they go out to pray and, and Jesus says, hey, wait here and pray with me. And he walks off and, and he, starts, he starts praying and he comes back and he finds them what? He finds them sleeping. And what does he say? He's like, come on. Can you not just watch and pray with me for this time? Let's try this again. Y'all pray. And he comes back and he finds him doing what? Sleeping again. And what does he tell him? He says, man, like the spirit is willing, but what? The flesh is weak. Here's the reality. In our waiting for him, listen, listen, hold on to this. In our waiting for him, it is gonna be real easy to go back and do what our flesh just knows how to do. It'll be so easy just to go back and sleep because that's what we know. Your flesh, it knows how to operate. Your spirit, when it is poised and it is ready and you are ready, God, I just wanna hear you, God, I wanna you're gonna experience the fullness of his presence. So are you poised? Number two, they persevere when God feels distant. Go back to my fishing. I've made hundreds of casts and caught no fish in one trip. But I don't go anywhere. I stay. God's presence at times in your life is going to feel very dark. Can I just encourage you with that? It's going to. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Guess what? Valleys are inevitable. And in valleys, sometimes it's really difficult to feel like God is like real close, isn't it? God, where are you in my marriage? But I'm gonna hold fast. I'm not going anywhere. God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand firm. God, I'm gonna persevere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be steadfast, feet ready for you. I'm not gonna make any subtle moves. God, I'm so tired of trying to figure out how to do parenting. Like, God, where are you in this? And, and, but I'm gonna stand. I'm not going anywhere. I'm firm in this. God, I'm struggling right now being in your word because every time I open it up, I feel like I'm just reading just words that I can't even grasp. But I'm gonna stand firm. I'm not going anywhere because God I want to meet with you and I know this is critical God I pray and I feel like my prayers just bounce off the ceiling back to my bed but God I'm going to stand firm I'm not going anywhere because I trust that you really are a good God and then when I'm with you man this is great and I'm not going anywhere there's perseverance do you persevere wait for the Lord be strong Galatians 6 and 9, let us not grow weary of doing good. Part of doing good is going, God, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stand right here and wait for you. Those who wait for the Lord will renew. I want to ask the band to come up as we get ready for this last one because I think it's probably pretty appropriate with how we end our services, how we begin our services, the third thing that we see is that they're postured to respond when his presence is there. They're postured. When we are expectant of God's presence, we're also gonna be ready to respond when he shows up the right way. 
And you know what? Caleb and I were talking about this the other day, and I think it's important to note here. You ready for this? Listen. You and I don't get to determine right. Right is what you do when he shows up. Never met anybody in Scripture, read about them, that when they were in the presence of God, they were like, hmm. What should I do here? How should I respond? You know what? I'm going to stand here stoically. I'm just going to stare upon you, Jesus. You know, I think I'm going to dance around because I'm the dancing type. You know, we don't get to determine how we respond. Response is what happens when you're in the presence of God and you respond. God shows up, you move. That's a willingness and obedience. Jesus was talking in John 4, 23 to the Samaritan woman and he, he says, the hour is coming and it's now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That's response. Notice he didn't say singing and dancing, standing or kneeling. He says they will worship in spirit and truth. They will worship connected to the Father and they will worship the right thing. He says for that the Father is seeking. How do you respond in the presence of God? Are you postured to do that? Are you ready to do that? God, whatever, just God, show up. God, here I am. Here I am. So they're positioned to be in that place where they can experience. They persevere. They're not going anywhere when times feel a little bit wonky and off. But man, they're ready and they're poised and they're postured. And it's just, God, show me your glory. God, I'm going to move. Just show me your glory. And God, whatever comes out, that's going to come out. So God, here I am. Would you bow your heads with me? Can we start with just why are you struggling to be in God's presence? What's your struggle? We could add a lot more to that. Too busy. Focused on other things. We just need to spend some time confessing to him, just saying, God, I'm struggling. struggling acknowledging you. Are you a person who's positioned to see God? If you're not, God, I confess that. God, I don't set myself up to be with you. Do you persevere? Do you worship? Respond? Lord, here's my prayer, God, that we would be a people that would want your presence more than anything. God, I just want you and nothing else. God, would you open my eyes and my ears and show me your glory? God, would you show us, God, your goodness and your glory? God, help us to stand firm. Heart's ready.